everyone. This is Dr. Neeraj Kharavan. I am working as Head of R&D at EIONX. Today, as the part of our YouTube series, when multi-chain applications using Xtalk, we are going to see how we can transfer tokens across EVM compatible chains. So, as a part of this course, what we are going to cover is what are the building blocks for the Xtalk swap? Implementing the EVM smart contract on source chain and destination chain. Implementing the L1X Xtalk swap contract. Registry the source chain and the L1X Xtalk contract on the Xtalk node. And then initiating the swap. And finally, validating the swap on the destination chain using the Xtalk gateway contract address. So, as a part of this, let us start with building blocks for Xtalk swap. So, source chain and destination chain smart contract along with the Xtalk swap contract serve as the building block for the swap. Before proceeding ahead to the next step, let us ensure that we have the required prerequisites installed. So, for that we need to ensure that we have Rust, Node.js and NVM installed on our system. So, let us quickly check on my system. So, quickly check the Rust version. The Node version. Now, if you notice, Node version is 12. But, we need to ensure that we are using Node version 18 or else the functionality might not work. So, for this purpose, I will use version 18. So, yes, now it is configured to version 18. Coming back to the page for building the Xtalk swap contract. Now, we start with implementing the key smart contract on source as well as the destination chain. So for this purpose, let us start with step 1, initialize a new project. So before that, what I would do is, I will create a directory which would contain like both EVM and LMX projects. So I will name it as EVM to EVM swap. Traverse to it. And then open it in code. So that we can easily access our smart chain contacts, uh, our source chain contacts as well as the LMX contracts. So this is done. Now I will create the new directory. So I will copy these commands. So this is done. We are inside EVM swap. Now let us initialize a new NPM project. So we will do npm init while this is done. Step 2 that we have is to install hardware and set up the project. So the first one, install hardware. I have copied this command. Put it here. So let hardware get installed first. So yes, hardware is installed. Next step that we have is to set up the hardware project and while creating it, choose a TypeScript project. So let us copy it. Paste it here. So once the project is initialized, we'll have to choose the TypeScript project for this purpose. And select TypeScript project. Enter. So let this hardware toolbox get installed first. So once this is done, we move to step 3 to install the necessary plugs in, plugins and dependencies. So for this, we will install the TypeScript related dependencies. We will copy it. Run the command. After which, we will be installing 
open zeppelin contracts as we will be using this in our uh, solidity program. So this is done. Now we install the open zeppelin. After which we will be installing hardened ethers and ethers. Now one important thing is we need to ensure compatibility because if the ethers is not compatible with hardened ethers, it creates the dependency issue. So we will copy this command and what I will do is I will open this part as well which will ensure that all the dependencies also get installed. So, one thing that we need to ensure is that this is very much compatible or else it would create an issue. So, once this is done, next what we do is, we will have to configure the TypeScript. So, I copy this. Go to Agents Bar. Yes, Computer JSON and configure the TypeScript. So, this is done. Next step that we have is to write the smart contract. So, for which purpose, we will copy this smart contract. And if you notice, we have this function L1X send to send the token from the source network. Also, we have the L1X receive, which is the function to receive the token at the destination network. Which means what? That this source contract, you can deploy it on source as well as destination because it contains the functionality of both the networks. So I go to contracts, lockdown JSON and replace this with the file that we have and rename it to swap.soul. So this is done. Next step that we have is to compile and deploy the projects. So before compiling your project, one thing that I would like to suggest is ensure that your package.json has this configuration. Because what happens is if it is not configured then in that case we might face some issues. So once this is done, next step that we have is to compile the project. So we will run npx hardware compile. Okay, and after the project gets compiled, we will move on to having the deployment script, scripts with us. So, as we can notice, the project has got compiled, right? So, now we will have to go to scripts and create this file. So, I will copy this. Now, if you notice, as per the upgradation of hardhead, we don't have any scripts folder. So, what I would do, I would right click on event swap, create a new folder and name it, it, name it as scripts. And inside which, I will create a new file, name it as deploy.js and paste the code here. So, this is my deployment script. So, this part is done. Next is to configure the hardhead file for which what we are required to do is you need to put your private key here. In this example, we are taking Sequoia as the source network and BC testnet as the destination network. Since I have the common wallet for both of these, I am using the single private key here. So make sure that you make necessary Changes in this hardhead configuration file based on your requirements. So I go to hardhead configure.cs, replace this existing file with the one that we have. 
So here I need to give my private key for Sepolia and BSC. So for which I will go to my list of wallets that I have. This is the private key. We will copy it. Paste it here. So this is done. Now next comes deploying the smart contract on the source team. So let us try to do it. Okay, seems that it is not your copy. Let us try to copy it again. And I will replace this source network name with Sepolia. So once our smart contact gets deployed on Sepolia, that is the source chain network in the scenario, then we will deploy this same smart contact on BC testnet as well. Ensure that the wallet that you are using has some balance in it and as you notice this smart contact has got deployed on the Sepolia network. Let me copy this and save it for future use. So I have created this template where I am saving this contact address at the Sepolia network. Yes, this has been done. Now as we have mentioned we need to save this source contact address because we will need it while initiating the swap as well as the source contact address is required to be registered on the XTOP node. Next what we do is we will deploy the same smart contact on the destination chain. Only difference is we will change the destination network. So let us do it. We have changed it to the network BSC testnet. So this will be the destination contract address. So the smart contract has been called deployed on the BSC testnet. We will copy this as well and save it with us for the future use. So this BSC testnet contact address would also be required by initiating the swap. Now we move on to implementing L1X XTOP swap contract. So for this case, I'll create this new cargo project. For which purpose? I'll come out of it. Sorry. Okay. And then at this stage, I will run this command to create my XTOP swap L1X project. So this is done very quickly. Next is we need to use save this little RS file. So Xbox swap is the project I am going to. Inside source we have little RS. This is the default smart contact that we have which we need to replace with the one that we have here. So this is done. So let us quickly scroll through it. Next step is to update the cargo domain file. So again, I will simply copy it. And go to cargo domain. And delete the default cargo terminal configurations and update it with this one. So this is also done. Next step is to do cargo elements build. So I copy this and here first of all I will move to the folder which we created xtop swap and then I will do cargo build. So once cargo build is done, next step that we will have to do is to deploy the contract and as we know that to deploy the contract we need to have a wallet with some process. If you don't have any wallet as of now, create a new one. Since 
I have a wallet already. I'll import my wallet using this command. So I'll copy this here. I'll come here, paste the command here, and give my private key. So as you know, I already have few wallets of Elonix that we have used in our previous videos as well. Here I am using this private key and importing it. So yes, this is done. So since this is the only Elonix wallet I am importing, I don't need to set it to default with this, the default one. I need to ensure that I have a testnet faucet. I do have it. So now we will deploy the extract swap contract. We copy this command. Paste it here. Like this. Okay, so if you notice, I have already put the target Elonix release swap example dot o. If you notice, if I go to target Elonix release. I have swap underscore example dot o object file that is created, path for which is mentioned during deployment here. Right? So let us try to deploy this extra flow contract. So once this is deployed, the next step that we have is to initialize the smart contract. So for which purpose? I'll copy this command. And paste it here. So as you notice, we are required to give the smart contract address, deployed smart contract address here. I'm copying this, putting it here, and let's just try to initialize the contract. So once this is initialized. Next step that we have is to register the source chain contract and extract swap contract with the extract node. Before that, I will copy this initialized contact address and save it as we will be needing it for further steps. So I'll paste it here. So this is also done. Now to register the source chain contract, as we have seen in previous video, what we will be required to do this, we will be required to provide the source registry instance address which has already been provided in this example, right? Apart from that, you have the destination contract address. So as we had seen during our first video in this series which was related to EVM to EVM XCDP that is message passing. So in that case, we know that from the source Sequoia network, for the source Sequoia network, extract node is acting as the destination chain and from extract node, we will be sending the message as such. In this case, we will be sending the tokens to the this to the BSC testnet which is our final destination. So in short here in the destination contact address we need to provide our Elonix extra flow contact address. So and not BSC deploy contact address so we need to be careful about this. Next comes the source contact address so this is nothing but our Sequoia deploy contact address the source contract a source network is nothing but Sequoia and the topic of the event. Again, the topic of the event is uh, constant as such that as we have seen with respect to how we are sending the event to the extract node. So, for simplicity, what I will do is I will copy this request example, paste it here and update the values which are required. So, let us go through this command quickly. So, till this point, Elvanic CLI beta contract call, this is the source registry which we don't need to change. Register new source, 
is the method that we are calling arguments that we need to pass. First one is destination contact address. So this is LMX flow contact which I will simply delete the existing one and add the one that we have saved. So this is the one. Paste it here. So this is done. Next comes source contact address. So if you notice we have specifically mentioned that this source contract address should be without 0x. So what does it mean? This Sepolia, this is my source contact address. I don't need to copy the 0x. I will skip it and I will start from the next character which is after 0x. So I will delete the existing entry and paste the one here for Sepolia required contact address without 0x. So this is done. Source chain is Sepolia which is already mentioned. Event filter topic we don't need to change. Endpoint is V2 testnet. So everything else looks okay. So let us register the destination that is the extra flow contract and the source chain which is the Sepolia smart contract on this extra node. So this is done which means it has been registered. Okay, now if you want to validate the entry, what will be required to give this? It will be required to specify the source registry instance address. So what I will do? I will copy this command and let us replace this source registry instance address with what value? With the value that we have registered the details. Now if you notice while we are trying to view the sources from this registry we are starting from where? We are actually sending the argument from index 0. So we are starting you can say from the very first one as such. So ours will be the latest one. So if you notice that is a very big entry. So we will just simply check the last entry that we have. It is this one. Now if you notice destination contact address. So it is starting with 537. So is it the one that we have? Yes. This is the one we have for the L1X flow contract. Next one source contact address starting with 2C3100. So 2C3100. Yes, this is our Sepolia contract. So which means our source smart contact address as well as the extra flow contact address have got successfully registered on the extra node. Now next step is initiate swap. Now this is the most critical step. The reason being we need to ensure few things before initiating the swap. So let us follow the instructions one by one. First one is we need to add the below listed initiate swap.js at the scripts folder of the source chain and update all the data related to source and destination network. So first of all let me copy this. I will go to the EVM swap click click and here I am going to scripts folder where I will be adding the new file initiate swap.js So this is done. Now I am adding the code. So I have copied the code. Now what are the details that we are required to update? We should be very careful about that so that we don't miss on any. Starting with the one on the line number 15 that you are able to see source contact address. So this is my source contact address. I will copy this and replace it here. Next comes source token contact address. Now this is something interesting. 
I need to have source token in my wallet. So here in the Sepolia network, what I am doing is I am having some USDCs which for which I have the token contract address which will be used here. So if you notice the sheet that I have for the wallets, here I have the token contact address for USDC which I have on Sepolia. So I will be copying this and putting it here. This is line number 19. So we are done with this. On line number 23, if you notice we have the amount that we want to send. So this is the source amount USDC that we want to transfer. Okay. After this, we have we are required to specify source wallet address at this line number 34. So what is my source wallet address? This is my source wallet address. So I'll replace this. On line 35, we have destination wallet address. It is the same since I'm using MetaMask wallet for it. So this is done. Now comes source token contact address. Again, it's the same thing. Now next comes destination token contact address. So definitely we need to have destination contact address as well. So what I am doing in this example is from source chain Sepolia, I am transferring USDC to BSC testnet and I want to get USDT as a part of this swap process. So I will copy this destination contact address, add it here. This is done. Amount we have already specified here. What is the destination amount? So for the sake of simplicity, we have put it here to make it more accurate. You can use the price feeds provided by uh, different providers as such. So here I am specifying the value to be in this series. So this is of 6 digits I guess. Yes, okay. So this is done. Next comes destination contact address. So this is our destination contact address. I'll copy it from here. And okay. So replace it here. This is done. And the destination network is DSC, which we have specified here. So this looks absolutely okay. We have updated all the fields in this initiate swap script. So this is done. Now comes the important part which has been highlighted in bold that ensure that your source wallet has source token in it. So for this purpose, let us have a quick look. So here what I am doing is simply to give you an overview. I am opening my MetaMask wallet, okay, and here um, in my wallet, I have the USDC, if you notice, it is 39.6 USDC in this Sepolia network, okay, and if I switch to my BSC testnet, I have some USDT tokens as well, in which, so these would actually serve as the token contact address that we need. Okay, now um, first condition is satisfied. Now important is the second condition as well which is ensure that your destination contact address has the destination token. So what is the reason for saying? The reason being since on destination you need to pass the destination token definitely the smart contact address should have some liquidity in it. So that is the reason what we will do is let me first copy this destination smart contact address. I'll go to this wallet that I have and what I want to do is from this BAC testnet because yes my deployed contact address is on BAC I want to send. And where do I want to send? So I will paste my smart contact address here. So this is done. 
what asset I want to transfer. So say I want to transfer USDT. So this is done. How many USDTs I want to transfer? So say I want to transfer three USDTs. Okay. So let me do next. So this will give three USDTs to my destination smart chain. A destination smart contact address. So yes, this is done, which means now my destination contact address has got USDT in it, right? So I'll close this. Okay, and then now we are at a stage where we can move to next step because we have added the initiate script, updated all the relevant details. Ensure that my source wallet has source token. Also, my destination contact address has the destination token. So now the time is to run the script on the source network. So I'll copy this command. I'll just clear the screen first. Now, since we are inside Xtop Swap, I'll first come out of it. Go to EVM swap. So here we are, and now I will copy this command to run the script. Paste it here. Specify my source network to be supported here. And try to run the script to initiate the swap. So once it works, we will be able to see this kind of output where we will be having the deployer address which is nothing but the wallet address that we have for the source chain approved token transfer transaction hash and initiate swap transaction as well so let us check this so yes the initiate swap is done so I will copy this initiate swap transaction Okay, and as we can notice, we will check the source network transaction log using it. So for this, I will search for Sepolia Testnet Explorer. Go to it. And this is the initiate swap transaction which we have copied, which I am pasting it here. So if you notice, yes, we are able to see this from this is our wallet address interacted with this is our deployed smart contract address at the source chain. And if you notice, this is for 0.1 USDC that we have triggered. So it looks good. If we go to logs, here we will be able to see transaction receipt event logs. So the first event that we have is related to the Approval of the transfer from the wallet to our deployed smart contact address and the next is for the topic which, which is specifically to send the message to the extract node. In this case, tokens as such. So this is alright. Okay. The Last step is to check the destination network transaction log. So for this purpose, we will be using the destination extract gateway contact address from this table and check it on the okay, I guess it has got redirected somewhere else. I will copy it and go to the BSC testnet explorer. This is the one. I will put the extra gateway contact address and let us check that our transaction is getting reflected here or not. So, if you notice, it is showing the latest 2 minutes ago. So, I guess we have already passed that much time. So, let us confirm the details. So, if you notice, it is from 
this address to where to our gateway contact address. So yes, this is our gateway contact address, which is correct. And if you notice this BP twenty token transfer from this X three A six C. So what is this three A six C, which is nothing but our deployed smart contact address. So remember, we had credited our deployed smart contact address with some USDT because that is the one which will be transferring the USDT to the wallet address that we have. How much? So this is the amount we have specified for the USDT token. So this looks absolutely uh, fine. So here also we are able to see the event logs related to the transaction. So here you can notice the topic for it, and this is from our destination deployed contact address to the wallet that we had for the BSC, and it showed the value as well. So which means that we are able to successfully swap tokens across different EVM compatible chains. So this is it for today. Please keep watching the videos. I am developing the different type of smart contracts, building applications using Layer One X blockchain network. Thank you so much. Take care.